My name is Ebenezer Amwako Entry, and you are so welcome to this YouTube channel. On this YouTube channel, you are going to get videos that will set you up in your work with God and also with your prayer life. On this channel, you upload videos consistently to make sure that believers are guided to pray and pray and pray. If you are new to this YouTube channel, make sure that you subscribe to the YouTube channel so that when we upload new videos, you can have access to them. And also, if you don't understand anything, kindly send us a message and we will get back to you. Also, make sure that this video you are about to watch, you will like the video, try and comment on it. And when you are blessed by the video, make sure that you share it to someone. Thank you. <laughs> There are three credentials of the men that we call God's men. I will mention them and I will tell you how to access them. The first of such credentials is that the word of the Lord is with such men. When God wants to identify his man, what he does is that he sends his word to that man. The reason is because no foundation is eternal apart from the word of God. The only true eternal foundation in the whole of God's universe is his word. And so when God is raising his man, because he represents a dispensation, because he represents dimensions, the only true foundation such a man can stand on is the word of God. So what God will do is that he will send the word to that man and that man will carry that word so long as there is bread on his nose tree because he knows that what makes him invincible is the word that he carries. I quoted for you already from Psalm 105 and 17. This guy was in prison. At first he was in a pit. Then he became a houseboy. Then he was in prison. And he was in prison for 14 years. But he knew that he was God's man. The Bible said, until the time that his word came, it said the word of the Lord tried him. There are two words that came to him. The first word that came to him was foundation. And God allowed him to go through that pain to prove his conviction of that word. And so while he was in prison, he kept it. That's the word that tried him. Many times, it looked as if God had forgotten him. But even in the pit, he knew that so long as the word of the Lord is with him, God is with him. And so in pains and in sorrows, he kept his ground. He never deviated. He never cut corner. He never compromised because that word was his eternal consolation. And as he kept that word until the process was over, the second word came to take him out of the pit. Many people are looking for the second word, but they have messed, with, messed up with the first word. You must prove the first word for the second word to come until the time that his word came the word of the lord tried him the second word that came was for his manifestation the first word that came was for his preservation that word of preservation came from the lord the word of manifestation came from the king come out become become the ruler of my substance rule my senators take over my my, my, my resources that one came for manifestation but the one that kept him in the pit the one that kept him in Potiphar's house, the one that kept him in prison, was what made him God's man. There are many wars you are carrying today that you are wondering, if God is with me, why are these things happening? Those wars are for your preservation. They are trying your conviction because what wants to come out of you is beyond you. A generation will depend on it. You will become the light of a people. And so God knows. And before that can happen, you need to be tried. So you may be with your word for 10 years. You may be with your word for 15 years. But when you master standing on that word, God can beat his chest. When they say things are going wrong in Abuja, he can say, have you checked my brother? Jeremiah. I have moved to and fro the earth. There is no man. Have you considered my servant Job? I have men. For such men, even if their children die, they will stand. For such men, even if their business crumble, they will stand. Because I have become their shield and their exceeding great reward. My word is all they hold on to. And so no matter what happens to them, if they go to the pit, they will still come up. 
Nothing can be taken from them. Because when Job was tried, the Bible says God gave him double for everything he lost. But the, the items around him was not his consolation. The word of the Lord that was with him was his consolation. Joseph had the word of God. And when you find the man that carries the word of God, that is God's man. You may meet him in the forest. You may meet him in the pit. You may meet him at the belly of the ocean. Don't be in a rush. Jonah was in the belly of the sea. He was in the belly of a way. But he was still God's man. Because the word of God was with him. Hope you know that he died and went to Hades. While he went to Hades, he was still God's man. For such men, all things work together for good. Because God cannot deny his word. No matter what happens, God will find them. When the time was right, God commanded the way to go and vomit him. And when he came out of the mount of the way, he continued business with Abba. And God said, we were talking about Nineveh. Are you ready now? Are you ready now? He said, yes, Lord, I'm ready. And he entered Nineveh. When he cried, even the king tore his garment and covered himself with ashes. That is God's man. You may have met him in the belly of the way and you say, this man is finished. You don't know that the destiny of Nineveh depends on him. That man you saw in the belly of the way, he is carrying the destiny of a nation. That's why he can't sink. The word God gave you is for a people. And when the time is right, a generation will emerge from it. Does it look alike that a man can be dying in the belly of a way? Yet, the destiny of a nation is waiting for him. Are you not aware that Nigeria is waiting for someone? You are not aware? You think Nigeria is at the mercy of some funny politicians? Even the politicians are deluded. Because what they don't know is that very soon, God's man will rise. And when he rises, everything he does, God will amplify it. And when the time is right, they will wonder, how, how, how is it possible? Because the structures of darkness will collapse. Because God's man, God's man has shown up. <laughs> Somebody is catching a word tonight. Because where you are now looks like a pit. But if Joseph came out, you will come out. Somebody is catching a word tonight. Because where you are looks like the belly of the whale. But if Jonah came out, you will also come out. Because the word of the Lord is what makes you God's man. You are God's man. But you see, that word must try you first. What you are going through is the trying phase. Don't worry. Very soon, the trying phase will be over. He said, weeping endures for the night. He said, joy comes in the morning. Our light affliction are but for a moment. They work for us. An exceeding weight of glory. That's why I say, why we look not at the things that are seen. The things that are seen are temporal. The belly of the whale is temporal. The pit is temporal. The prison is temporal. Because when the word of the Lord comes again, I will be shining. I came to encourage someone tonight. Please sit down. Some of you are pregnant with nations. That's why your trial is heavy. Because God is trying that nation in you. When you rise up with one word, you will bring that nation to their feet. Jonah didn't preach twice. He preached once. But he had carried the pains and the burdens of that nation. The Bible said even the animals in Nineveh fasted. There are no two evangelists like Jonah. But for the powers, those evangelical powers, they were summoned in Hades. When he went through the fire, he discovered he was not born because God was with him. When he came out, he became a militant. Something will fall on you that generations after you will, will benefit from. I read the story of Kenneth E. Hagin. Up until he was 15, he was bedridden. But while he was there, he was incubating. And when Kenneth Hagin came out, Mark 11, 22 to 24, became globally known as Kenneth Hagin's scripture. Because he sat on that scripture until he stood up from this, the, this, the, the bed of death. And when he, he rose, there is no minister today that does not have the imprint of Kenneth Hagin on his life. That thing you are going through is an opportunity for the world to try you. When you rise, you will be shocked that nations will come out of you. Who is God's man? 
Number two, there are signs and wonders accompanying such people. Because every man that is God's man, there is a signature God lives upon him. And those signatures are usually supernatural. When God sent Moses, in Exodus chapter 3 verse 20, he said, I will stretch forth my hand and I will strike Egypt with all of my signs and my wonders. You can't be God's man without an element of the supernatural around your life. If you are God's man, somewhere, somehow, a supernatural dimension will be activated. In 1 Corinthians 12 verse 12, Paul made a statement. 2 Corinthians 12 verse 12, he said, I have wrought before you all the signs of an apostle. Because a man sent of God, a man who is God's man, there's something about him that is divine. You cannot deny it. Isaiah said, I and the children the Lord has given to me, they are for signs and they are for wonders. Every man that God commissions, there are signs that follows him. You may look at that man walking in some form of favor and you know that, no, you are not so handsome to enjoy this kind of favor. How can it, somebody that looks like you enjoy this kind of favor? There's a finger behind him writing. You have to read that finger first to understand what is happening. You find somebody else who is excelling with so much speed. And you come and say, come. This is not natural. What is going on? It's God's man. And if you find such men, don't fight them. Because what is happening to them is beyond them. Even they may not know. Some are so proud. They think it's because they are special. <laughs> Some think it's because they have a particular skill. I was there. Five years ago, when I come to preach, the first 15 minutes, I bamboozled the people. When I humbled them, then I start opening Bible. God now showed me that if it's about oratory, let me show you some men. And God took me to history and began to show me men that spoke and their walls were preserved like a monument. And he said, it's not by power. It's not by might, it's by my spirit. That's what Paul realized. He said, when I came unto you, I did not come with excellency of speech, declaring unto you the counsel of God. He said, I choose to know nothing among you, save Christ and him crucified. He said, my preaching and my message, they were with the demonstration of the spirit and power that your faith may not be built on the wisdom of men, but on the power of God. So when God commissions a man, he walks behind that man. To validate that man with signs and wonders. The man we know is not about him. It's about the God walking with him. In Mark 16, 20, he said they went out. And the Lord walking with them. If you are not God's man, you will labor with your strength. But when you are God's man, the Lord walking with them. Confirming the word with signs and wonders following. This is the problem many people have. They are looking for the spectacular. And they are not identifying the supernatural around them. The sign of God on your life may just be divine health. For 20 years, you have not fallen sick. You know that that strength is not natural. And you begin to thank God for it. And the moment you become grateful, it breaks into another dimension. The same way your health refuses to fail, your business will now start refusing to fail. Your family will start refusing to fail. But somebody is looking for what happened in the life of Joshua to happen in his life before he said God is with him. And so his ingratitude will rob him of what God is doing with him. Every man who is of God has a sign following him. And so your job is to discern it and begin to thank God for it and see how it will spread. For some of you it's favor. Where they are rejecting people, you show up, they accept you. For some of you, is divine guidance and timing. Some people came five minutes earlier. They rejected them. You came five minutes later and met the right man. And you have checked your life that 20 of the last progress you enjoyed was because you were there at the right time. Not because of anything special. And then you start wondering what is happening. Divine guidance and divine timing is a supernatural manifestation around your life. You cannot grow as God's man except as you discern the element of the supernatural around you. There are most of you that have been in accident three times. People died, you came out. And you took it for granted because you didn't end up in the mortuary. 
you don't know that there is something called divine exemption at work in your life and you are not thanking God for it. If you want to walk in the supernatural and if you want signs and wonders to remain as a token validating you as God's man, you must discern that element of the supernatural and thank God for it every day. Every day of your life, you build your confidence around it. There's no day I wake up and I don't thank God for mercy. Because I know if it were not for mercy, I would have been destroyed, ridiculed by now. The reason I'm standing has nothing to do with me. It is the mercy of God at work. And so sometimes I may lie down praying for four hours. All I'm saying is thank you Lord for mercy. I don't have so much vocabulary in English language when I pray. Because my prayers are full of thanksgiving. When I check my life, the errors are too many for me to be where I am. And so I keep appreciating God. I keep appreciating God. And people come to you and say, why are things happening like this? Are you so smart? Smart. Smart. What is the element of the supernatural around your life? Have you discerned it? Thank God for the testimony of Dr. Williams. It will inspire you. But you need to find out the finger of God in your life. And when you begin to thank God for it, it will become a feast. When you begin to thank God for it, God himself will appear. Because your thanksgiving pulls God out of his dwelling place. And he begins to tabernacle with you. Many people don't know that signs, the little, little signs around their life, is God telling them that they are his man. And so when they step out, they feel is the mighty man making global impact that are God's men. And so instead of appreciating God for what he's doing in their lives, they are thanking God for what he's doing in the lives of others only. Sometimes you meet people saying things like, how I wish God was using me the way he was, he's using that person. How I wish God is with me. You are not aware. Sometimes God may give you an encounter just to make you aware. That was the undoing of the young Gideon. He didn't know that God was with him so much that in the spirit, he was called a mighty man of valor. And the angel appeared to him. He took the angel days to convince the man that God was with him. And nothing special was done to Gideon. Gideon was just brought to a place of realization that God was with him. That realization was enough to take the army of the Midianites. That was all that happened to Gideon. That mighty man of valor. He said, how can you call me that? If God is with us, why is he not doing for us what we heard him do for our fathers? He was quoting Moses. He was quoting Joshua. And he forgot that while he was yet sitting, God was with him. Are you part of those believers that are quoting every other person and what God is doing with them? It's because they testified of it. That's why it looks big in your eyes. Some of the testimonies men share, they are casual daily happenings in their lives. But they have known that that little feast is symbolic of a mighty outpouring. And so when they share it, they share it with great joy. And you hear those testimonies. Sometimes somebody shares a testimony that happened once in two weeks or happens once in two weeks. And you say, this guy is sleeping in heaven. Some of the people you are praising, you have more supernatural elements in your life than they. You have not just awoken to that reality. And you are not grateful enough to convert those things God is doing to greater dimensions. As you live here today, you will not just realize what God has been doing in your life. You will start thanking him for it until it becomes a river that cannot be stopped. The third thing that characterizes God's men is the oppression of the adversary. If the devil has not come for you, it means it's not yet conspicuous that you are walking with God. I hope you enjoyed this video. And I believe that you were blessed. If um, you were blessed by this video, make sure that you click on the share button and share it to a friend. And also make sure that you like the video so that YouTube can recommend this video to other people so that they can also be blessed by the message if you have any question please make sure that you contact us and we'll get back to you and also if you are watching this video and you don't know jesus christ ask the lord and personal savior i want you to make that decision just contact us in the description
Call us and let us lead you to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior. And lastly, make sure that you subscribe to the channel and turn on the, that notification bell icon. Turn it on so that when new videos are uploaded, you can be notified. Thank you so much and see you in our next video and prayer section. Bye.